All right. So good afternoon. Thank you for joining. Um, and so this is anybody that's potentially interested. Maybe you applied, uh, maybe you didn't, and you're looking to see what roles and opportunities there are. So to understand that, this is a great opportunity for us to just walk you through real quick uh, the boards, understanding the differences in the boards, and then what are the opportunities within them and what do our bylaws say? And so uh, with that, um, we'll go, what are the bylaws? Uh, so we wrote bylaws uh, almost three years ago, and <clears throat> there was a lot of effort put in. And, and so you, you sit back and go, who wrote those? Those were the 11 founders of the organization. Uh, and what they wanted to have is what, you know, there was a, a great organization that unfortunately died, um, uh, PSPA and PMA, and they wanted to put kind of safeguards in place so nothing like that ever happens again. And, and again, I'm speaking from what was kind of told to me. Um, I didn't have a ton of interaction with PSPA in, in that organization, what I, but I'm very close to a number of people that were very tied to it uh, and, and, uh, had leadership roles at time. And some of our staff were former, uh, PSPA and PMA, uh, staff. So I feel like we have a really good pulse to it. So, you know, one of those things was they didn't want one company having, you know, too much power. Right. And so, uh, supposedly that, that had some presence in the, in the past, they didn't want just an executive director and staff, and a board that just kind of ran the conference and rubber stamped everything. They really wanted a voice, uh, you as members, uh, board members to have a lot more power than what was in the old organization. Uh, they also wanted um, uh, to stop, I guess. And again, I promise you, I've had uh, Delta biz or coach. So uh, I, I'm not getting first class tickets all over the country. They didn't want it. Supposedly, sometimes board members were flying to Japan for a week with their family and everything, you know, and or wherever all over the country and staying in presidential suites and spending just lot, lots of money. And the board really doesn't want that type of stuff. They, the, the founders really believe that that should be used in so many other ways, lobbying efforts, um, you know, share, uh, us being represented at the superintendents conferences and principals conferences, and really just growing uh, the whole industry as a whole, not, not just, you know, just kind of that organization and trade show. Uh, so that money to be spent on projects um, and a change in leadership, meaning the opportunity to always have fresh blood coming into the organization. Um, and so what we built and uh, we believe is a really well uh, grounded, uh, fundamentally sound organization. Uh, all that said, we just spent um, this past uh, last week of, of November, the governing board spent hours redoing the bylaws because there were some things in it that we never anticipated and they unfortunately happened. Uh, and so we actually just spent a lot of money with an attorney and a lot of time redoing and have it, we use some ideas, Mr. Freeman's on this call and he had one of those ideas and, and we'll share what that is. Um, these are the officers. When you think of any organization, you have executive leadership, right? And so who are the officers? And so the only person missing here is me uh, as the executive director, I'm staff, uh, but the governing board, you have a chairman, a treasurer and treasurer elect on the executive board. You have president, vice president, vice president elect. And then you have myself, you got seven officers of the organization. Now uh, these are not elected by membership. These are elected by their, the board members themselves. So to do one of these roles, you would have to be on the board for at least a year. Now, uh, you sit back and go, well, David, um, uh, you, you're, aren't you an officer and you're on the governing board? Yes, but that's only because I helped found the organization. Someday, God forbid, you know, it's, but we're all, you know, we all know we're going to die someday. But with me and my role uh, and, and the way it's structured, uh, upon my retirement or upon my death, my seat goes to an at-large. Uh, and so it's open to anybody. And the next person they hire as an executive director will not be on a board. 
typically you don't have that. It's just I help found the company and or the organization uh, and the nonprofit. So, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. All right. Governing board. What do they do? So you got two boards, executive board, governing board. Governing board manages staff, which is me, uh, Rachel, um, Michelle, any contract or anybody we do, uh, Gary Peugeot, Jeff Razine, we all report to the governing board. Um, uh, they derive this strategic direction. I, I tend to tell people, um, I'm just the tip of the arrow. Like where you steer me, I execute and yes, I get stuff done. Uh, but that strategy and that structure is coming from a group of 14, 15 individuals. Uh, me being part of that, right, in the, in this piece. Uh, they manage all the money. Um, no longer, uh, like I told you about how another organization was structured, every governing board member gets a budget for the year, uh, meaning they see what our budget is at SPOA, as well as they see monthly income and expenses. Uh, I, I truly have to review, which is great, but I review all major expenses with the treasurer, before I ever purchase them and review all that. So we make sure the fiduciary responsibility to the members uh, of the organization. And then the governing board um, over, is oversight to all activities, all right? Um, the governing board founders, I just, for me, I put this out here, I just wanna make sure people that are applying, people know um, what are the founders? The founders were 11 companies that there was more. We had other people, a part of the calls, but then when it came to brass tax being on weekly calls at that time and then put money up, there was 11 people. I put up just as much money as an individual, but I ran it under a company called DC squared, which I do consulting with. Um, and so I put just as much as everybody else. And we founded legally school of photographers of America. And so those 11 companies um, are the founders. The, the bylaw state, they have a permanent seat until it could be, uh, there's a number of reasons. Uh, but first is they sell. If they sell, their seat goes away. Uh, we made it where the language, the legal language says if they sell to another company in the industry or another person on the board, that seat still goes. So it's impossible to have more votes. Does that make sense? I ho hopefully that, that follows. If there's an acquisition, uh, they're acquired by a VC company has nothing to do with uh, uh, school photography, that seat goes. If they lose majority ownership of their company, that seat immediately goes to an at-large. Um, uh, and I just said, in the case of DC squared, which is me, um, I my seat just immediately moves at death or at retirement to uh, um, an at-large seat. So currently there's four at-large seats on the governing board. Two terms are coming up, uh, Mike Harris and Mike Bell. Um, and then again, you know, there's other, you know, ethical, you know, let's say someone hadn't paid their taxes in two years. As a board, we would come together and because you'll see we have some things we do when people say, hey, I'm really, I'm all in. I want to be a part of this. We need, the last thing we want to do is have somebody on the board that hadn't paid a bill to a lab that's a lot of money that you know leaves and goes to another lab or whatever the case might be um, or haven't paid state taxes the last thing we need is that person or on an executive board or governing board that hurts all of us in the industry right so we do a little of a bit of a background check on that um, and that's continuously monitored all right governing board bylaws uh, bylaws require an at-large positions be only from the school photography company or yearbook company membership Meaning if you are a, let's say I sell software or I sell um, backgrounds, I can't be on the governing board because I don't own or I'm not a member under a company or yearbook membership. That's not the same for executive board. Executive board, as long as you're a member, you could be a retired member, educating member, whatever type of member, they they still could run for an executive board position. The bylaws require an at-large position to be in good standing as a member. Obviously, that's part of that ethical slash all the other pieces that come with that. Um, and good standing with industry suppliers, taxes, federal, and at the state level, right? Um, the, the other pieces are they sign a governing board uh, policy. It talks about ethical practices. It talks about like, you know, we wouldn't want someone on the governing board or executive board 
to walk in and literally sit down next to me or sit down next to Bill Freeman and go, Bill, hey man, you want to be my vice president of sales? It's not a place to recruit, right? It's a place to help the industry. We all know you can recruit, and, and but not at a place when we're in meetings and whatnot. Um, there's, uh, we're, we're doing background checks and reference checks. Um, and so that's kind of just what labs are you using? What softwares are you using? Just to make sure you're in good standing with everything that you're doing. Same for our companies. Uh, and just to make sure that, um, you know, someone on the board is, is the right person, the right fit for us. Um, don't really care if you have five speeding tickets, but, you know, some sort of national violation would pro probably prohibit you from being on the board. On the governing board, there's 10 virtual meetings a year, every month, basically, except for the months of November and the months of either June or July, depending on where our conference falls. Um, those meetings typically go an hour, about the longest we ever see is about an hour and a half. Um Outside of that, unless you, you know, apply to be an officer, um, you're, that's pretty much your commitment. Now, we ha actually ask other things of you to participate in, but those are the requirements. There's two in-person meetings. One is the Leadership Summit in November each year, um, and we always do that at the same location as where our summer meeting is going to be. Uh, our aunts, that way, everyone gets to see the hotel, uh, share ideas and thoughts, uh, and then at the July conference, and obviously it's a volunteer board, um, those in person, we pay for your travel, your hotel room, you, and you get showered and spoiled and pampered by our business partners. They do an incredible job. Uh, Tyndall Graphic had uh, an incredible uh, box of goodies for everybody at the Leadership Summit. Uh, Image Quicks bought uh, shirts for everybody this past year, uh, photo merchant bought Helly Hansen, really nice jackets for everybody. Um, and on top of the, um, the foods, the, the breakfast, the dinners, the everything else, you really truly get spoiled by that. That's not the only reason I want you to join, but, um, yeah, there's gotta be some perks to your volunteer time. All right. Um, executive board, more of the action board, uh, they, um, without, you know, a lot of that strategic direction comes from the governing board and the actions happen at the executive board level. Um, they create committees to further a purpose, right? A specific, you know, example would be the photography committee. Um, there's almost 14 people on that committee that meet four times a year, probably five times a year and help in judging of the contest, as well as our student contests. They have to recuse themselves whenever they're voting on their own photographers. It's a really, that is a really well-built, oiled machine. And so we're trying to beef up those committees. And, and that comes from having a, a solid um, chair uh, that can recruit other people. And those other people, sometimes are your competition. And you're like, really? But again, they're, everyone's a competitor in the room. But the purpose is to for, you know, either... Uh, truly make sure everyone's steered out of the water, so to speak. If you can imagine, um, there's some there's some actions that a brand new company that they just don't know. And, and so if they don't have the resources and the training and that stuff, they could truly do something and put an article or a news story in the media that's bad for all of us, right? And so the purpose is to truly... Uh, genuinely make sure that we raise the bar for all ships. Um, they they manage membership and the cost of. Um, and so that truly transparency the last two years that really hasn't taken a large precedent. It will this year. Um, but they kind of reevaluate what should membership cost? What should this be? Uh, the executive board and the president the officers of it should be the pulse of membership. Um, they've helped facilitate all the elections, um, including the governing board. Remember, it's kind of like the House and Senate. There's a checks and balances there. Um, and then they truly, it's our mission, educate, advocate, promote, protect, and preserve. Um, pretty much every chair on the executive board, I forgot a comma there. Um, that, and one thing to teach everyone is that um, one thing you'll know is I'm dyslexic and ADD. And so every slide, every document you ever see is going to have a typo or a word spelled backwards. So just going to just say, so you know, um, 
but they truly resemble the educate, the training portion, the advocate Mark Homerding and some of the team that's gone to Washington, D.C. and started getting in front of these states that are doing, you know, crazy student data policies, which are great, but not thinking of the copyright protections that school photographer companies have by federal protection. And so we've already seen in multiple states where a state law impedes federal law, which we know will supersede, but it's a pain. And so if we can stop that and advocate and get letters out in front of that, it's good. Promotion, uh, protection, David Lake and copyrights, um, Tom Martini and standards. Uh, he's really built it whether he you know, says, hey, I want to renew or someone runs for that role, um, we're building an accreditation. And you could join SPO, but you also be accredited. And so that's going to mean a certain amount of uh, liability insurance that a district really already knows. They sign a commitment that they're background checking every year. All these type of checks that literally look at schools and go, wow, okay, yeah, I need to do business with them. Um, and one of the, you sit back and, you know, last week, just last week, we had 1,897 people uh, visit our website. And when you look at the where they're going to, it was over half. So, you know, you sit back and you're like, you, oh, there are over 800, almost 900 people were going to find a school photographer. What does that tell you? That schools, districts looking for options. And so, uh, we're going to use that and build upon that to educate about bids and RFPs and try to, to make it fair for all, right? Uh, and then preserve, you know, the historian, you know, what we're doing today. Uh, we're working on trying to partner uh, with museums and, and have a collection that really just makes our our uh, industry, you know, powerful and reminded, all right? So executive board open seats, business partners. This is uh, uh, held currently by a gentleman by name, uh, Philip. Um, what this does is we build business opportunities. And then he, he shares ideas with me like, David, not just coming and having a booth, but like what, you know, silver, gold, um, platinum par partnerships in which we do social media. How can we provide things for them instead of or opportunities where they can get in front of a lot of people without having to be in person, like webinars or whatnot, uh, that have to do specifically with school photography. And so that's uh, something that uh, he's done a great job um, in, in bringing some new people to the table for me, as well as trying to uh, do that for himself. And so what a, what a cool role. Um, copyright protections. This is a gentleman, David Lake. Um, and that's a, that's a broad one. <laughs> it, it's really... Uh, copyright standards, um, guidelines for the industry, whether it be software, school administrative software, um, yearbook industry. Um, and so that's, that's a big role. Standards. Um, this is a gentleman, Tom Martini. Um, he's written, I mean, I, I don't know if Tom's going to reapply, but if he doesn't, I do know that that that's a plug and play. Someone just has to jump in and, and fill that seat uh, because he's already built a lot of, and the whole governing board and executive board have taken time to work on this. Uh, so it's, it, we're excited about that. Membership, um, this is an open seat. So is historian, I'm missing marketing. I forgot that one. Uh, those are open and I could actually place those now. Um, but if, if, if no one applies in these, uh, until the application process, we'll just run it through the elections event management. This person works tirelessly, probably three weeks out of the year. When I say tirelessly, you know how I said one hour, uh, this person, uh, puts like, I'm guessing 80 hours in that week with me, uh, managing the conference and, and just all the facets of that. Um, and so that's Jen Balco. I'm praying that she reruns um, that uh, or we get someone in event management that's done that before if she has not or she gets somebody on the committee that she can train. So when she comes off um, and then secretary of the board, uh, this role um, is obviously just like all other secretary of boards. They're taking the notes. They're keeping the minutes, but they're also very uh, tied to social media presence. Um, at the conference, uh, this person has is kind of right in line to help us 
you know, whether it's take pictures, help work, they're almost staff for us at the conference. And so this is a very busy role um, in the org as well. All right. Bylaws allow any type of membership, but you can't you, to be on this. You have to be a member of some way, shape or form of the, of the organization. So if you're an industry supplier member, yep, you could be on this. There is one law by law that I forgot to say is that let's just say you could have a company that's a founder or non-founder, you know, at large on the governing board. They could potentially have an employee or maybe they're, they're an employee and maybe the owners on the executive board. What you can't have is two from the same company on the governing board. So if you're a governing board member, no one in your organization can apply for a governing board membership, just as an FYI. Um, bylaw required chairs and positions to be elected every two years. What that does not say is officers. Bylaws require the applicant to be in good standing, just like the governing board you know, status. Where I'm going with this, uh, and just so you're aware, you could truly, uh, I'm going to pick, let's, let's, I'm not, I'm not going to pick anybody on here. I'm going to say, let's say his name is James. James applies to be on the executive board for the standards chair. James is the only person runs un, you know, uh, no one else is running. So he wins that seat. He loves it and literally loves SPOA and runs for uh, vice president elect uh, that is elected uh, every two years. Um, and he runs, he gets vice president elect. That means he immediately becomes vice president elect and his term, even though it was two years, now becomes six. Because once you become the vice president elect, you're then vice president for two years and then you're president for two years. I know that sounds crazy, but this is the beauty and the non-beauty of running a nonprofit and understanding the pipeline of that and then how it interacts with your bylaws. The same goes for governing board. If you become, uh, so an at-large member, non-founder could potentially run for as long as they've been on the board for at least one year, could run for treasurer elect. If they're elected treasurer elect, there's there's one less um, governing board seat open that year uh, and for many years because they automatically will just stay on that board for six years. Um, one of the, the beauties of that, Bill Freeman brought this up, was if we elected a president or we elected a vice president, though I do feel the quality of individuals I see on this call and the ones that have applied, um, you do run the risk that they just could be brand new to SPOA and they don't understand the mission, the vision and the organization. And so we wanted to have just the board elect those officers. Um, and then you got to be able to take everything that's in the bylaws and then do an extension to it, depending on what role that they're in. All right. Same thing. They sign an executive board member policy, background check, reference check, nine virtual meetings a year. Actually, that's wrong. So sorry. Seven virtual meetings a year and two in person. They do not meet in October. We voted on this. They're not going to meet in October, December, and in March because everybody's too busy during that time. Um, and so uh, those are three meetings a year that they won't meet virtually. Um, and so then there's two in person. The same thing. Leadership Summit, July conference. Um Applicants, you can go on to our homepage. Uh, Rachel just put it on the homepage. If you are on this call and you haven't applied, um, there's an application on the homepage. It's also if you go over to About Us and you go Executive Board right at the top, it's got all the members and it's got a member application. If you're applying for the Governing Board, you can go to the Governing Board and it's got that application. I, there's about five people on here that said, I unfortunately applied, but I applied under the wrong board. It doesn't matter. Just tell me. Um, it's fine. They're, they're all coming to Rachel and I. We're good. Um, applications through March and you just go, how does this work? Um, we're going through March 1st. At, on March 1st, I'm kind of locking it down. And then I'm going to email each person and just say, you know, you've had time to review are you sure you're good with all of this? There'll be a document that uh, allows us to do a background check and then we'll do a slight uh, industry reference check. 
And, you know, I don't think there's any issues there, but, you know, if there was, then we'll talk about it. Um, if not, uh, in April, you'll be invited, uh, once you jump that ship, you'll be invited to be a part of two webinars. Just because I know everybody's schedule, you might not get it, and I don't want to force that. So I'm going to have two different webinars. Um, I'm going to do, uh, you know, anybody that wants to. Um, everyone everyone needs to hear, like, why you want to run for whatever office. And you know, we have one person that's running for governing board and for, like, three seats on the executive board. doesn't matter, y'all. Like, it, it, whatever seats are open, um, wherever your passion puts you. Um, the, we're going to give everybody three minutes to share a little bit about yourself, but I'm going to be very strict on that. You get three minutes, uh, why you wish to serve, um, and, and be a part of the organization and then what positions are you applying for? And then, uh, there'll be a ballot that has all that tied with that, um, recorded video, um, just like this. I'll push that out on social media. It will also go personally to each, um, person that is the assigned elected member uh, for the, their industry supplier, or if they are a company member or yearbook member, it doesn't matter uh, because uh, in the vote will happen in person at our conference uh, in Greenville, South Carolina um, on July the 10th and 11th. This is Monday and Tuesday. Um, basically, uh, it'll be, she's, you're going to hear her sing, uh, she, her, she's a wonderful musician, but it'll be my daughter, Taylor Crandall, probably. <laughs> and it's going to be like going to, everyone's going to get, Hey, you need to stop by this booth. Uh, she's going to look at someone's license. It's going to have every company that's a member, uh, whether you're a retired member, educating member. Uh, from like your superintendent and we have a decent number of educators that are members of SPOA um, uh, and then um, industry suppliers uh, franchise members I don't know franchise members can't vote sorry that's the only one that can't vote um, everybody else at that point um, is going to come in we'll have their name if they're saying hey I'm taking this person's spot because they can't be here but that way we guarantee we only get one vote per company for every category um, the computer voting system, it's going to be reviewed by all officers. So if you remember, we have seven officers. There's seven people witnessing this. Uh, it's not like one person gets to look at it. Uh, all seven will see it at the same time. Uh, and then announcements are going to be made that morning on stage of the general session of who our new uh, governing board members are and who our new uh, executive board members are. So um, outside of that, I'm shutting up and turning over to questions to you all, if any. Anybody, anybody? David, I'd like to say one thing, this is Bill Freeman. Sure. Um, I've, I've been very fortunate over the years to have been members of different organizations. And each of the organizations has its st strong points and some of its weak points. And the one thing that I will say about SPOA is that SPOA is where I go to learn about the business of photography. Whereas a lot of the other organizations I go to, it is more about individual learning. Um, I've been able to take and to put my fingerprint on a lot of different parts of the industry over the last 40 years. The people that I see on this call, they've left their fingerprints on the industry. As we get new blood, as you called it a little bit earlier into the organization, they're going to be leaving their fingerprints. And it's nothing but good that's going to become out of all of this to help do everything that we need to do to make the organization better. And, and I applaud the people that are applying. Um, if you have a, a strong urge to take and to do something, become a member, become a, a board member, become a, a, a committee person, and you can take and to leave your fingerprint on the industry. Love that, Bill. Thank you. 
David, I have, I have two questions. Yes, sir. Uh, one of them maybe doesn't fit in this venue, but has there been any other, has there been any interest in the copyright chair so far? I, I truly can tell you, I haven't looked at, I just, I, I didn't go down. I just looked at governing board, executive board and like number. I, I haven't gone down, but I, I'll, yeah. I can send you that if they have. Okay. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be interested if someone else has, uh, has raised their hand. Sure. An interest in that. Um, and then the second question, this is the first time I've seen the executive board titles all together on one screen of mm -hmm. the different, of the different roles of chairs. And, um, I know, um, standards, standards as it's written now is about standards we're looking for, uh, for small members to, to live up to. Correct. Right. Behavior, conduct, yep. processes, procedures, audits, that sort of thing. Yep. Um, the the piece that that I've I'm in is copyright protection, uh, but ninety eight percent of that document is about data transfer. Yeah, it really standards. is. Yeah, uh, it's kind of misnamed. If we're wondering sure, I agree. To what that does, I I don't think people who are interested are going to know what that is. I, I didn't know what it was and I've been doing it for a decade. So, yeah, no, it's, it, that's a carryover and it's a good point. I'll change it. It's kind of like when I said, man, I'm going to tell you about this one. There's a guy named David Lake and it's a lot more than what this is. And we just haven't been able to like really come up with an appropriate title. Yeah. And, and, and I know the, I, I mean, one thought I had in my head was one was operational standards, which could be. No, oh, I like that. The other group and this one could be data and copyright standards or something. That they both they both represent a standard of such. Yep, I agree. Good call. And data and, and data and copyright standards and copyright. If you if you want to keep copyright in the title of it, because it that that is a newer addition to that document is some of that content. Yeah, cool, awesome. No, I appreciate that. That's great. Good feedback. Other questions? Anyone? Not all at once. Going once, up. Oh, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Up. Oh, you're on mute. You're on. We we can't hear you. Sorry. Let me see if I can. Down bottom left. You should be able to hit unmute. Can you hear me now? We can. Yes. It was unmuted, but it was on some funky microphone choice. So sorry about oh, that. Okay. Um, All good. So I actually don't have necessarily any specific questions at this point. I just wanted to tell you, thank you for putting this together because you yeah. answered them all for me. So I appreciate, it. I appreciate listening to all of this and getting some clarity about everything. So cool. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, if no one has any other questions, um, I got to do my slide. Thank you. Like, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for, you know, even considering helping this industry, right? And so we're all living our own worlds. And sometimes it's like, man, this is, I'm just in this state. And I, but I will tell you the people that have served, uh, Bill, uh, um, David, uh, you're going to, you're rubbing elbows with other people that are like mine. And a lot of people are really open. They're not so protective and, and they, they truly don't care. Like, Hey man, I don't want you to go through that. I see you're getting ready to go down a, a bad road. Um, you should do this because, and, and so I, I have seen people that truly, I don't think liked each other and they've found ways to work with one another and actually kind of change those relationships. So um, it's an attestment to, or a testament to the the people that are there. And I really hope we have the same folks coming in and, and the faces I see, I know do that. Um, so we'll hope you join us. Thank you again for your time and have a wonderful rest of your spring. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. For Thank you, David. Thank you.